Today's video can be found in your Unit 1A packet, pages 22 through 27, maybe? Yep, yeah, 22 through 27. So we are talking about multiplying decimals and dividing decimals today. And you can see at the top of this page, 22, that it says problem of the day. These are usually pages that I like you to show me your thought process. You do them on your own, and then we'll go over them in class. So read the example. You can see that they're showing you multiplying decimals as if they are fractions, or step two, method two, multiply as if they are whole numbers. Ignore the decimal points. So whole numbers, no decimal points here. Six times seven. Then putting in the decimal points. Then putting them in, counting them up, and moving from left to right to put the decimal in the answer. So uh, go ahead and do number 7, 8, 9, 12, and 13 on your own. You can either use step 1 or step 2, method 1 or method 2 rather. Um, I like method 2, multiply as if they are whole numbers and then put the decimal in. So go ahead and do page uh, 22 and we'll go over that in class. So on to page 23, dividing decimals. This can be found in the sixth grade text of your series if you go online to MV Math 2 um, in Chapter 3, Section 3. Divide a whole number by a decimal with one decimal place. So Jamie and his friend live one mile apart on the same street. Each block on this street is two-tenths of a mile long. How many blocks apart do the two friends live? So the first method here, they're showing you a nice picture, a bar model. They're taking one and dividing it into two-tenths pieces. You can see that there are ten parts that this bar is divided into, and they're coloring each two-tenths alternately dark and light. Um, the model shows you that there are five of them all together, five two-tenths parts. So the two friends live five blocks apart. A nice sentence answer box label there. The second way of doing it is to convert the two-tenths to its fraction and multiply by the multiplicative inverse, 10 halves. 10 halves would give you 5. So the second example, 16 divided by 4 tenths. No picture done as uh, the multiplicative inverse of 16 times 10 fourths. Multiplicative inverse there. And you get, when you cross cancel that, you'll get that 4 times 10 in the numerator, which gives you 40 in simplest form. So on to page 24, 1 divided by 5 tenths, first way we could do it is to bar model it. Take a rectangle, divide it into 10 parts, and what are 5 tenths worth? So how many 5 tenths are in a whole? And I can see that there's one of them here that's dark, and one of them here that's light, so there are two five-tenths, right? Two five-tenths in a whole, or two halves in a whole, right? We know that. Um, one divided by five-tenths could also be written as the multiplicative inverse, one times ten-fifths, which we know ten-fifths is two. Um, number two here, 48 divided by three-tenths. 48 divided by 3 tenths, the fraction 3 tenths, is the same as 48 times 10 thirds. Then we can cross cancel that 3 into 48, which gives us 16, and 16 times 10 would give us 160. So how many 3 tenths are in 48? A lot of them, 160 of them. 75 divided by 15 hundredths. Well, 75 divided by 15 hundredths. If we change it to 75 times the multiplicative inverse, 115 fifteenths. Well, 15 is a factor of 75. It goes in there five times. So five times 100 would be 500. Not bad. Fraction-friendly problem there. It's way better than doing long division with a decimal. Um, nine tenths divided by three tenths. Yes, I am fraction friendly. Love fractions. Love them, love them, love them, love them. Way easier. Nine tenths times ten thirds. Multiplicative inverse. Well, those tenths cancel. Oh, the threes cancel as well. And everything becomes one. Three times one is three. 
So 9 tenths divided by 3 tenths is 3 wholes. Next page. Um, you could try this using a calculator to find each of these quotients. While I know that really, if I move my decimal two places, 3 and 5 tenths divided by 5 hundredths would give me 7 tenths. Well, if I move my decimal, 3 and 5 tenths divided by 5 would give me 7 tenths. I don't need a calculator to do this. 3 and 5 tenths divided by 5, I just did that right here. Well, that's 7 tenths. 35 divided by 50, that, well, that's 35 fiftieths, which is the same thing as 7 tenths. Uh, 132 hundred thousandths divided by 12 thousandths. Well, if I move my decimal three places, I have 1 and 32 hundredths divided by 12. Well, I know my 12s tables. 12 times 11 gives me 132, but I need two decimal places there because I had two decimal places right there, right? I'm dividing 1 and 32 hundredths by the whole number 12. So I'm making my divisors whole and doing the same thing with my dividend. I get 1 and 32 hundredths divided by 12. I just did that. That's 11 hundredths. Um, and again, I get 1 and 32 hundredths divided by 12, which is 11 hundredths. 1 and 32 hundredths divided by 12 is 11 hundredths. 13 and 2 tenths divided by 120, guess what? It's 11 hundredths. Um, so I don't need a calculator. Yes, you can verify it. You can use a calculator. I'm doing it mentally by converting my divisors all to whole numbers. So when we divide decimals, you change the divisor to a whole number. You know that. By moving the decimal point to the right, then move the decimal point in the dividend the same number of places to the right. Why? Because division is a fraction, and whatever you do to the numerator, dividend, you have to do to the divisor, denominator. So whatever you do to the numerator, you have to do to the denominator. So we have to keep that consistent. So if we are making our divisor a whole number by multiplying by a power of 10, then we have to make our dividend uh, larger by multiplying by a power of 10. So um, in fact, there's a little note here. I love history of math. The division symbol was first used by Johann the Rahn in 1659. If the story goes that Johann was working very dark, uh, late into the darkness, working for hours on problems that had to do with fractions, and he saw something like, you know, 8 divided by, you know, maybe a 6. And it was getting light, and his lamp light was getting very dim. And all of a sudden, you know, he was very blurry-eyed, and it was kind of looking like this with a line and this. You know, it was getting very blurry, and, you know, and then he was like, oh, any number A divided by any number C. And, oh, it kind of looked like this thing. And he's like, hey, we could write it like this, too. And I wish, Johan, sorry, I wish you never found this thing out. I wish that was never discovered by you in that late night evening because I like the fraction line being the division symbol, not this one, my own personal taste. So Johann Rahn, we have to thank for our division symbol. So um, here's an example of dividing by decimals. Uh, an estimate of this problem would be approximately ah, 200 divided by 10. So my answer should be around 20. Um, I'm going to change 9 and 6 tenths, move it over 1, do the same thing in my dividend, 199 and 68 hundredths, and you can see this problem is done for you, and then do your long division, which we practiced. 9 tenths divided by 5 hundredths, well, we got to change that 5 hundredths into 5 wholes by multiplying by 100, ba -dum -ba -dum. two places to the right, 9 tenths, well, two places to the right, you got to annex. Another cool math word. Annex is zero there, and you get that the uh, answer is 18. The solution, the answer is 18. So on page 26, uh, we're going to divide here, do our practice, and move our divisor into a whole number, 9. And same thing to the dividend, 1. We're multiplying it by 10. 
So this problem would look like this in rational form. Well, if I multiply the denominator by 10, I have to multiply the numerator by 10. That's what fractions say. They've got to be equivalent. So this is really 63 divided by whole number 9. And we all know what that answer is. That answer is 7. Um, for hundredths divided by 25 thousandths. Well, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2. Oh, annex that 0. Put your decimal up in your quotient. Uh, 25 goes into 40 approximately one time, right? Uh, and we get 25, and when we subtract, we get 1, 5. Oh, we have to annex a 0 and bring it down. Uh, 25 goes into 150 six times. And we have a remainder of 0, so our answer is 1 and 6 tenths. Uh, question 13. Uh, and if you know your 13s tables, which you're supposed to know, by the way, all 6th graders should know at least up to their 13s tables. So if you don't know your 11s, 12s, and 13s, get memorizing those. 1 and 3 tenths, and the decimal on 780 is at the end. Annex is 0. Then I get 7,800 divided by 13. Well, I know 13 goes into 78 six times. And then I just have a bunch of zeros left. So yes, my answer is 600. There are 600 times 13 to get 7,800. So the answer is 600 there. Solve each equation. My dividend here is the 528 ten-thousandths divided by 6 hundredths. I'm going to move it two places, move it two places. And, oh, well, 6 doesn't go into 5. So 0, uh, 6 goes into 52 approximately 8 times would give me 48. And subtracting, I get 4, oh, another 48. So that's an 8. And I get the answer 88 hundredths. So page 27 seems to be missing in my smart notebook here. I repeated page 26 again. So go ahead and read page 27 and do that problem number 7 on the bottom of page 27. And that's it for today.